Hello, I'm Stephen Harrison. I'm the Medical Director of Pinnacle Clinical Research in San Antonio, Texas, and a visiting professor of hepatology at the University of Oxford, United Kingdom. Welcome to this interactive exchange program on the role of the diabetologist in recognizing and managing non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or NASH. NASH is just one component of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, an umbrella term that encompasses a range of progressive hepatic conditions from simple steatosis to hepatocellular carcinoma. NAFLD begins with NAFL, which is characterized by steatosis of the liver without notable hepatocyte damage. NASH is also characterized by a background of steatosis, but is accompanied by inflammatory processes that result in cellular injury in the liver. It's clear that the prevalence of both NAFLD and NASH have reached epidemic proportions, primarily a consequence of poor dietary and lifestyle trends. As a result, these liver conditions are now responsible for substantial burdens for individual patients, their clinicians, and healthcare systems. Patients with NASH are twice as likely to die from cardiovascular disease compared with the general population, and NAFLD is the leading cause of cryptogenic cirrhosis and the second leading indication for liver transplantation. It is projected to be the leading cause of liver transplant by 2025. NAFLD is estimated to affect 24 to 33 percent of the general U.S. population and more than 40 percent of middle-aged Americans. The prevalence of NAFLD is particularly high among patients with type 2 diabetes, reaching almost 70% globally in this cohort. On the other hand, current estimates suggest NASH affects between 3 and 5% of the general population, 25 to 45% of patients with obesity or type 2 diabetes, and more than 35% of those with both disorders. In fact, the increase in NAFLD over the last few decades has closely mirrored the well-documented rises in the rates of obesity and type 2 diabetes. Diabetes is also a significant risk factor for progression from NAFLD to cirrhosis. And these are not the only risk factors we have identified. Patients with metabolic syndrome, hyperlipidemia, or hypertension are also more likely to present at some point along the NAFLD-NASH continuum. There is significant clinical evidence showing that NAFLD and NASH are independently associated with both the incidence and prevalence of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and chronic kidney disease as well. Stratifying patients based on the morbidity and mortality risk associated with NAFLD and its progression to NASH can not only identify patients who should undergo more formal testing for liver damage, but also shape shared clinical decision making particularly as the number of available treatment options increases over the next few years. NASH is a multifactorial systemic disease that reflects highly complex interactions among multiple environmental and metabolic factors superimposed on the patient's genetic background. This involves hepatic lipid accumulation, usually due to a high-fat diet, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, and the associated insulin resistance and chronic release of fatty acids to the liver with hepatocyte lipotoxicity and inflammation. Other factors contributing to the activation of pro-inflammatory signaling pathways include dysregulated immune signaling and abnormalities in the gut microbiome and bile acid metabolism. Taken together, it manifests in the histologic features that characterize NASH, steatosis, lobular inflammation, and hepatocyte ballooning with variable degrees of fibrosis. Triglyceride accumulation in the liver is the primary contributor to fat accumulation. Excess free fatty acids, particularly saturated fatty acids, are a key component of this process, whereas insulin resistance amplifies elevated free fatty acid levels by suppressing adipose tissue lipolysis. The severity of these general pathophysiologic features is greater in NASH compared with isolated steatosis in NAFLD. Adipose tissue insulin resistance leads to hepatocyte lipotoxicity through the release of free fatty acids into the circulation and activates liver inflammatory and pro-fibrotic pathways. Oxidative stress further heightens this pro-inflammatory state. NASH is also likely to present with hepatocyte ballooning, a clear sign that these cells have been injured while apoptosis is common as well and correlates with obesity, insulin resistance, and elevated free fatty acid levels. Importantly, while each of these components occur separately, 
The multiple inflammatory processes develop simultaneously and feed into each other to amplify the clinical output of disease progression and liver damage. The rate of fibrosis progression in patients with NASH has been estimated to be seven years for each stage. F0 is an absence of fibrosis, which will then progress through stages F1 and F2 to reach F3, called bridging fibrosis. F4, the most advanced stage, is characteristic of cirrhosis. Therefore, it may take up to 30 or 40 years for many individuals with NAFLD to develop liver cirrhosis. In fact, many patients with NAFLD are likely to not progress much at all. However, in a small subset of patients, often referred to as rapid progressors, this disorder can advance to cirrhosis within a decade. Obese patients with type 2 diabetes are at the highest risk of being rapid progressors. Cirrhosis can in turn lead to hepatocellular carcinoma, which has been shown to have an incidence of 13% over a seven-year period. Furthermore, some reports have detailed cases of NAFLD causing hepatocellular carcinoma even in the absence of cirrhosis. In aggregate, insights into the pathogenesis and progression of NAFLD have uncovered a number of potential treatment targets for NASH management. Weight loss by lifestyle modification or bariatric surgery improves NASH. In patients with type 2 diabetes, medications such as pioglitazone or liraglutide have also shown benefit in randomized controlled trials, but neither has an FDA indication for the treatment of NASH. There is evidence that vitamin E can be effective, though to date only in patients without diabetes. Numerous drugs are currently in development, including several in late phase clinical trials. The diversity of these agents and their mechanisms of action reflect the spectrum of potential contributions from heterogeneous inflammatory pathways. Among the medications in phase three trials, several therapies target apoptosis, insulin resistance, and hepatocyte lipotoxicity, bile acids, glucose, and lipid homeostasis, or hepatic stellate cells, all of which are key mediators of fibrosis progression. It seems likely that in the future we may be rationally combining agents with different mechanistic profiles into multi-drug regimens for patients, taking advantage of their complementary effects to produce additive or even synergistic efficacy. With that in mind, I'm going to turn the program back over to our multidisciplinary panel of expert faculty for a series of what promises to be lively and informative conversations about NASH pathophysiology, identification, and current and emerging management options. Thank you for your time today and enjoy the rest of the show.